Yes, uh, topic number two. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, basically, like what it takes to become like uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. and, and, and entrepreneur. I don't want to say mm -hmm. like successful, but what it takes to be to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So the characteristics, the skills. How do you want to be an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. what, what are the requirements? Well, we can say that those who want to be entrepreneur want to be businessmen, want to make some kind of business to make a proper living, decent living, and uh, so that we, we, we can say that uh, we don't become too poor, too difficult, financial hardship, everyone that kind of life. But in order to go into business and become successful, become entrepreneur, you have to start from somewhere. There are so many different ways, and there are few categories. Number one, people study by family, doing uh, in Cambodia we call uh, family man, that sell everything, and then everyone involved. That's one kind of business, but it usually stays that way for many generations. Another business is that uh, you put together uh, as a share group, and you launch a business, but that is 99% fail usually. Another business is you do uh, because you do because you don't have any education. So you do sunrise sunset business, what we call red ocean business, which means that people are doing it. So you see they make profit. You come along and you come along, come along. So everyone doing the same thing. But those who are rising, they already move out. But then when you come in, sun starts to set. So it's cutting thro uh, throat cutting competition, so it's called Red Oceans of Land. So this is another kind of business that people do. Another kind of business that people do is that they start from small and by either knowledge or by skill. Uh, knowledge plus experience, skill plus experience. Why do I say that? And these two businesses are the most successful that can last for three generations. Knowledge and skill and uh, skill, uh, uh, knowledge and experience, knowledge, uh, skill and experience. Give me an example, I'll give you an example. You want to do something, anything, think of it, put your hand on, put your mind on. Let's say you want to become an uh, engineer, an electrical engineer. You have the passion in here. You have the passion from day one that you start to understand about the, the world. And you want that so badly that you take that interest to school. So that interest you take to school, you educate it. Once you are educated, you are also start working on it to get experience. And once you graduate, you have some knowledge and experience already. Then you start working. Once you are working, you have full experience. And when, once you work for about five to ten years, you become expert and skillful at it. So these five process make you become someone that is already fully successful, ready to be launched, to be seeded. So once you become expert in that field, you can move on to, be, to do your own business in electrical engineer as a company. And then by that time, you are mature, you are married, you probably have house, you have kid, People know you, people trust you, you know so many uh, uh, company and so many supply, you know the bank, you know how to operate, you know how to manage, you know how to do cash flow, you know, you know everything. So when you do it, usually it takes about one to three years, you are, you are fully successful. It doesn't take a long time and it's automatically. And you don't have to relearn anything, it's automatic. So that is from interest educate that interest, and then given that experience, and it's been long enough to become an expert in that field, open business in that field. No matter how plenty the business, you are still doing different from the rest. You're doing with knowledge, with experience, with wisdom, with maturity. You still win the war. That's number one. Number two, People don't go through the same process. Sometimes they fall around, sometimes they finish high school, uh, they make mistakes in life, and then suddenly they become mature. They say, 
it's too late for me to go to school. But sometimes it's never too late. You still can do the same thing, but say, I don't want to go to school then. I just want to acquire skill. So mommy, should I, what should I do? Well, ask yourself, what skill do you like? Well, I like to do maintenance. I like to do AC repair. I like to start a company and then maybe do construction. Or I want to do auto shop repair. Or I want to do uh, carpentry. That is a skill. I want to open a garage station. That's a skill. Then you go for that skill. And that skill, they are usually taught at technical or vocational school. And usually last for one six months to one year to four years to PhD. So it's the same thing. You go to learn the skill and you, while you learn, vocational school usually have training there. So skill to train, train to work, work, get experience, become open. The same thing. So if you learn AC for six months, while you learn you also do AC. So you know AC. But if you have money, you reach, you're from a better family, you, got, you start a business, an AC technician company that you have all the technician under you. You can repair AC and organize as a corporate company. When any company comes, you have all the team ready and you hire a manager to help oversee. You have GM, you have a, a OM, operation manager, you have finance manager, you do things. And you yourself, you keep going to have more training in different seminar. Usually uh, in America, they have a, a, a workshop where you want to learn HR, then they would invite people who are chief of uh, human resource officer. They will come give you a one hour speech seminar. And then you pay and you learn from the best company. And then you want to do, learn how to do financial management. And then they invite CFO from a very well-known company and they, they carry out one seminar, like two hours, sometimes one whole day, and then you pay. And then different people with skill. And then you say, I want to do uh, management. Mm -hmm. Then they go to join those kind with different people that are in that field, in the c field, mm -hmm. that come and train you. So you learn while you are doing business. And so that your staff that you hire to do the management will not trick you, will not cause you trouble because you also know on the way, along the way. So this is how other way to do business. So one is the educated way, one is all, one not that we are not educated, skillful way and learning in the process. So this is called three generation successful businessmen. So it seems that, uh, in your opinion, like uh, at least people need knowledge, skill, and experience yes. in order to go to business. Yes, business. you will never become successful without education. You become successful, but it is a family corporate, a family business. The most you can go up is a family corporate, because they have family corporate eventually. But you cannot become a corporate company and going on IPO become big and expansional and go international because you need knowledge, you need experience, you need uh, uh, emotional intelligence, you need all the five uh, 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 language that is the, the strong native language to negotiate, to write contract, to do things, and you need international language to communicate, you need the public PR uh, language you know, you also need the ITC language. You also need the, uh, your own skill language. That is, you major in uh, engineer, you major in architecture, you major in IT, for example. So you need five major languages in order to be able to do good business. And those language you acquire usually through school. And school, while you're going to university for four years, it is for you to experience many environmental social impact from your friend, from your neighbor. The, the, the deadline, the intense of competing, the homework, the reading, hundred thousands of books, the 
or the, the lecture that you listen to, hundreds of lectures, and uh, the, the, the stress that you go through, everything that experience in university life, the good and the bad, the trusted and the untrusted people, those are the experience that bring you a sense of wholeness, a sense of mature, a sense of responsi uh, responsibility as a wise and full of wisdom people. And that makes a lot of difference between those who are educated and those who are not. And when you are not educated, you do business, you're successful, but you fail so many times, sometimes you give up before you continue. But you are educated, you are going through experience, and you have this expertise through, through many years, you fail less. And when you fail less, you have less disappointment. And for people who not, do not come from the rich family, they, they cannot afford to fail so many times. If you're from a rich family, you can fail so many times, you still have someone to depend on. But not the case for the rest of the people in this world. You have one or two chances the most, and then after that, you are doomed to fail. People do not do business as what I have described. They do what we call the uh, share business. And that is not in the books. And that's why we go bankruptcy. Seven, eight, hour, ten. Which means that I call my friend, put in ten thousand, and our friend put in five thousand, and our friend put five thousand, ten thousand. We have a group of about ten people together and do something that you see they're doing good, so let's do that too. And then one of the friends have no job or hire someone to do it. And uh, hoping that to make money overnight. You make profit, you become jealous. You lose money, you become greedy. And there's argument, separation, no more friendship. This is the kind of business that Cambodians are involving for many generations. And that's how the successful people keep teaching them. And this is the failed method, the failed uh, 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 business model. There's no such thing in the books. In the book, they teach you share from the shareholder based on the M and A. Merge and acquire. You merge the company, you acquire them, and you put into a corporate company, go on IPO, so you sell the share. So this is a concept. But no, we do share as if Joe Hon clear. So this is total fail. You never see people that last permanent or make money. So you see Cambodian people keep throwing away millions and millions and millions of dollars every year by investing this kind of uh, business model that's not existed in the books. So, so what you are saying is like <laughs> you, you learn, you get the skill, experience, and then you do a business, and then you expand, mm -hmm. and then you go IPO, and then yeah. other people come buy, buy a share, and then mm -hmm. it's successful together. Yes. But in Cambodia, you see like people can want to do one business, call up friends, mm -hmm. chip in some shares, yes. and then the business goes wrong, friendship goes Broke. wrong too. Yeah, goes wrong too. And this happens every generation, every decade, you see, but we never learn a lesson. We trust our instinct, but our instinct do not follow your, <laughs> your, your trust, your confidence, your thinking. So sometimes it's uh, contrasting each other. The another business that people do fail in Cambodia, this is the second model that always fail, and I guarantee you 100 more years still fail. And Cambodian people are, are good into doing this. We call uh, greedy business. That means you want too much. If you open one business, and then you become CEO, Usually they don't focus. You remember when you do a business, it's just taking care of a baby. It's just like having a baby just born, a neonatal. You have to care for the whole family, the mom, the dad, the parent, grandparent. You care for that one kid, the same thing business. So make sure there's no harm, make sure there's no loss, make sure there's no sick. 
So the whole family involved, just like what Hillary Clinton say, to raise one child, you need a village. To do one business, you need the whole family, the same thing. If you don't do that, you will not make it. But in Cambodia, once you have a business, you have CO card, you join association, you join club, you join this and that. There's never such culture in other developed countries. They never heard of different clubs. This is a way to associate and to belong to and different political structure, different country, they have different way of, uh, how you say, organized people. And it's normal for some country to do that. So they have people accountable for where you're at, which team you are from, so that everyone is connected in somehow. So they have accountability of how and who and where. But that is not how you do business. You die hard into it and you focus into it. You put all your mighty energy into it. But that's not the case in Cambodia. So what happened? When you go and you share the cards, CEO, CEO, and other people come, group CEO, and you feel so ashamed, you feel so small, and you lose confidence. And then you go home, you say, we're only small. Why don't we just do another company? Maybe earn more money, and then they split. <laughs> this is weak. This is weak. This is no management. This is no money. Eventually, both, both business fell apart. They fell apart because no manpower, no capital, no human resources. This is how business fell in Cambodia. They never do that. They do business, they call founding business. When you do that business, you until become a founding business, a founder of something. And then you do that business until that business grow internally and expand to the point that you have to cut off the branch, otherwise it's too heavy. So this is how they do. They focus from small, and then, for example, if I were to do a school, people would not come to study, which what people did before I started the school. They just hire someone to bring students, you get percentage, and then you teach. And then the school, you have nothing. No cafeteria, no school bus, no cafe, no cafeteria, no, no nothing. That's not school. Yeah. But when you do school in America or in other country, you have to have playground. You have to have all the function that are safe and sound for students. So what happened? For students to come to school properly, you have to have school bus for them. You have to have cafeteria for them. You have to have coffee shop for them. You have to have bookstore for them. You have to have service team for them to clean. You have to have maintenance team to clean. You have to have a uh, map for them to buy. So when you have all of that, then people feel convenient to come. So when people feel convenient, more people come. More people come, you expand more of those revenue services. So one campus, before you have just one food court. Now your whole campus, you have six tall buildings, for example, in Mount Chiton. You need at least five food court. And those are service uh, uh, revenue generating. Mm -hmm. And then you say you need coffee. So now there's about five coffee shops here. Within that building. Within this campus. Mm -hmm. And then you have about, uh, you have one big bookstore. Mm -hmm. And you have uh, about five minimart. So you have five minimart, you have uh, five book, uh, one bookstore, you have five coffee shops, you have five food court, you have uh, maintenance, construction, you have school bus, you have auto shop, you have everything. And each one generates fun. And when I do that, when I did that, 
and people start to have a fight within family member because they start to kick their relative out and they start to do the same. And that's when there's a lot of things happen during that time. It's a mess among family member. So that's how you do business. You do not just plant one mango in the, in the jungle and expect people to come and buy it. You have to plant a tree, you have to create a garden, you have to create a resort, place people sit, people fishing and so on. People come, they see not a jungle anymore. It is a place to entertain. So they can buy mango, while if there's no mango, they can also relax, fishing and so on. So basically, you do that company until it becomes huge. When it becomes big enough, you can outsource it and then franchise the food court. You can outsource it and do embers. You can do auto shop. You can do bookstore. And then you can do minimart outside. And you can do a cafe shop. And even the if plan, event planning for the school, it become an event planner that yeah. we sold out. Okay. It's just a bulletin. It become to my, to my online that we sold out. So it grow internally. And then we are still doing school. I'm not doing many business, just school. But when you look at people seeing so many things, you don't understand the business. You say, wow, so many business. It is just one business school. But school cannot survive without any accessory. It needs also many auxiliary services that help support the school to make sure that it continues to grow. So this is how you make business in America or in other country that for them to be survive, to sustain and long lasting. But we do not do that. We split our company, my had a high side and that year, and year, and all and dual. 